Uh, and then we've got a sixth that's orbiting just outside of Mercury, between Mercury and Venus, and we are continuing to take data. You know, every single time we, we analyzed a new quarter's worth of data, we just, we laughed. Out popped another planet candidate around this uh, Kepler object of interest, which at the time was KOI 157, and is now known as Kepler 11. Um, so who knows what the data will continue to reveal as we continue to take data, as we continue to collect observations. Um, very flat system, it has to be flat, and by that I mean these planets are not orbiting in with funny angles, you know, like Pluto does at some obliquity, crazy obliquity. They all seem to be very nearly coplanar, which has to be the case in order for them to all be transiting, right? The probability of having a transit decreases as you go out in distance, right? Because it just takes a tiny little angle to swing something far away right out of the plane, right? So it's not transiting anymore. These are very flat. They're all transiting. We have masses for five of them, and that's just an, another point I wanted to bring up quickly. Uh, we thought, well, we knew this method was going to work. I mean, we, we, we expected it did, it would, but, but it had never been done before to actually confirm dynamically the existence of a planet from the, you know, identified in the Kepler data without the need for Doppler spectroscopy, for these Doppler measurements that tell us the mass. We got the mass of five of these six planets without the need for Doppler spectroscopy, for Doppler measurements. And the way that we did this was by timing the transits very, very precisely. And we noted that they were not strictly periodic. They didn't happen at exactly the predicted time every single orbit. There were small differences. And those differences arise because one planet, with its mass, is gravitationally tugging on another planet. And they're exchanging energy in a very systematic way, in kind of a dance between the two. And, and how much that, that makes the transits either, either jump ahead in time or lag behind in time is dictated by the mass of the objects. So that's what I mean by a dynamical, a dynamical uh, detection of the mass dynamical because you're, you're looking at the orbits, you're seeing small differences, and it's due to those masses. So we know the masses of five of these planets without Doppler spectroscopy. This is turning out to be a very, very powerful way of confirming the existence of these planets, and you're going to hear a lot more about this as, as the months go by. Okay. 